Hi everybody and big welcome to a card review for Frodo Baggins, our Lord of the Rings hero. This is a white green 2 CMC Celestia halfling scout legendary creature 1 free with two passive abilities. Whenever Frodo Baggins or another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, the ring tempts you. And as long as Frodo is your ring bearer, I mean, he gotta be your ring bearer. I mean, it's the ring bearer guy himself. He must be blocked if able. So he comes with another set of abilities, basically. Here is the ring. So whenever you get the ring tempts you, you start gaining these abilities. So whenever the ring tempts you the first time, you get this emblem and you get the first ability. When it tempts you the second time, you get the next ability and so forth. So whenever you have achieved four ring tempts, you can't really benefit more from this emblem. But also whenever the ring tempts you, you may connect the ring to one of your creatures. And your ring bearer, which is the one you connected to, is a legendary creature and can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So you basically make something, a creature, into a legendary creature, but also it gains Skulk. The second step is, whenever your ring bearer attacks, draw a card and then discard a card. That's kinda good. The third step, whenever your ring bearer becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller sacrifice it at end of combat, so kinda strange death touch. In the fourth step, whenever your ring bear deals combat damage to a player, each opponent loses free life. Now the two good steps here are, well, actually the only good one is the second one, because that is something of a card draw effect, like you're looting through your deck, so to say, you're drawing and discarding cards. The first ability is also kinda decent, it's someone pseudo unblockable or hard to block. Skulk is good. The other two abilities down here though are not that necessary, it's not something you wanna dig for. And this is very important to evaluate because it's evaluating the total value of how good Frodo Baggins actually is. Because Frodo Baggins together with a lot of legendaries will create a really high amount of ring temptations. So if you run Frodo Baggins as your commander, you're easily going to have... You can actually re-read his entire ability set. So remove the entire first part and just read Frodo Baggins have Skulk. And whenever Frodo Baggins attack, draw a card and discard a card. And that's actually pretty okay. For a green-white mana only, that's actually kind of good. Also, the guy have to be blocked. So if po opponents have like Esper Sentinels that are sitting there and isn't really attacking, they have to block with their Esper Sentinels. So he's on like a Esper Sentinel hunt, kind of. That's kind of good. So overall, like the ability is not that good. Like it's a very mediocre ability. Drawing a card and discarding a card whenever you attack. Skulk. One free, have to be blocked, but still, for the mana cost, not that bad. But suddenly when you start comparing him to other cards already existing inside the entire format, then you have things like Dark Confidant that is just better. Same thing but better, same mana cost or a better mana cost, black and one colorless, colorless is better. And he is guaranteed card draw, but you lose life, however, throw the Baggins is draw and discard, while Dark Confidant is just generating a card draw directly for you. You lose life, but... Who cares? It's a cost we're willing to pay for the value of cards in our hand. So do we have evaluation for competitive CDH play for Frodo Baggins? Sadly not that good. I don't think you should have him inside any forms of 99s. I don't think he fits inside my CC build. CC is basically legendary tribal. She's looking for all kinds of legendaries that she could utilize. And we have way stronger legendaries compared to this guy. So. Sadly, nothing for CC there at all. Ezeka, God of the Tree, however, is a little bit more addicted to legendaries compared to CC. She could actually utilize this guy because she upgrades him. He, she makes him able to tap for mana, but also Vigilance, so he can attack, draw a card, discard a card, and then tap for mana afterwards. And that's great for Ezeka because Ezeka are looking for legendaries that is just producing a form of value, a form of card effect, because Ezekiel is generating a lot of mana on her ability, while this is generating cards for you. So, you could actually see some play, maybe, in Ezekiel, potentially? Another commander that could be interested in this is Tumna and Thrasius. The reason is actually quite simple. Tumna enjoys unblockable creatures. 
And Frodo Baggins is something of an unblockable creature. Skulk is good at getting through and connecting to someone's face. His dad is going to generate him a card draw, but also he has a card draw effect on his own as well. So there is an appeal for Timna here, however, going back to what I said earlier in the video, we have better cards, Timna already has a lot of really good cards inside the deck, and I don't think Frodo Baggins is really competing against those other options at all. So it's not looking great for our Frodo Baggins, however, if we just abandon the CDH concept, how good is he in casual? Actually, I think it's pretty interesting. This is a very rare effect for Celestia. Being able to draw and discard cards, well, drawing cards in Celestia is very common, but being able to discard cards is actually rather rare. It's not something we usually see in Celestia. So if you want to build a Celestia deck that is pumping cards into your graveyard, then you suddenly have actually a cool option. One of the coolest cards in Magic is Glory. Flying, white and two generic creatures you control gain protection from the color of choice until another turn. Play this ability only if glory is in your graveyard. So this wants to be in your graveyard, you want to discard it. And Frodo as your Celestia commander can actually do that. We also have Valor, as long as Valor is in your graveyard you, and you control a planes, creatures you control have first tr strike. So suddenly we're making his ability into a positive good ability. Discarding card isn't always bad because discarding Valor is like a casting Valor for free. However, there aren't that many effects like this. There's another green thing that gives everything trample and you have Genesis. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Genesis is in your graveyard, you may pay one green and two generic. If you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's good to have Genesis in your graveyard. You want Genesis to be in your graveyard. And this is like an auto include in this kind of commander. It's actually a really cool card. I really like it. It really feels great when you get to discard it and utilize it from the graveyard. It's like, I'm casting spells for free by having this in the grave. It's amazing. But there's just a little bit too few effects for this to actually get going and working out for you. But we have a little bit more. We have things like Arrogant Worm, which is a 5 mana 4-4 four, four trample. But Madness, if you discard this card, you may cast it for its madness cost instead of putting it into your graveyard. Perfect. There is even a white madness card, Frantic Purification, Destroy Target Enchantment. Madness, only one white mana. You may play this card for its madness cost anytime you discard it from your hand. So in the end there's like something here. But if I'm gonna be honest, if you evaluate everything we've kinda put together, like the Genesis, the Glory, the Value, the Madness cards, in the end the casual power level of that isn't that good. But that's not really a problem when it comes to casual, right? Like I said earlier, this guy is giving you the option of building a discard theme deck in Celestia. And I don't think we have that many options out there that is available in doing that. So I think a lot of people could build this just because it gives you a very unique and strange experience. But as a finalized uh, outcome evaluation, in the end not that good. Not bad, but because of power creep, we just have so many better cards already existing that is doing the same thing, but a lot stronger. Hope you liked this short card review. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Wizards of the Coast are printing a lot of new cards, so more short, fast, and efficient card reviews are coming up. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.